Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic is Iran's Fateh 110 solid propellant short-range ballistic missile. Unveiled in 2002, this missile is the ancestor of almost all of Iran's solid propellant ballistic missiles existing today. For propulsion, the booster technology from the Zelzal 2 and 3 battlefield rockets was used for the Fateh 110, while the guidance system was derived from the Chinese B-610 via its locally produced Iranian version, the Tondar 69. The development of the Fateh 110 was partly motivated by the refusal of Russia in the late 90s to provide Iran with the Iskander short-range ballistic missile. General Hassan Tehrani Mogadam and General Kazemi, key figures in the IRGC Air Force Self-Sufficiency Jihad Organization, traveled to Russia to negotiate the acquisition of the Iskander ballistic missile for improving the precision strike capability of the force. The negotiations with China on the DF-11 failed as well. These events became the driving forces behind the development of the Fateh 110. Although the initial variants of the Fateh 110 did not match the performance, accuracy, and special features of the Iskander, they represented a significant advancement for Iran. The motor casing technology and HTPB solid propellant from the Zelzal series helped shorten the development phase and reduce risks. Similarly, the guidance system from the Tondar 69, reverse engineered by the Iranians, provided the Fateh with an inertial measurement unit based on dynamically tuned gyroscopes, offering useful accuracy for a missile in its class. While the more advanced Iskander employed jet vane thrust vectoring in addition to its aerodynamic surfaces for quick ascent, the less sophisticated Tondar 69 demonstrated that a set of steering fins with a good guidance system could be sufficient for relatively precise ballistic missile guidance. Consequently, the Fateh 110 was designed with a simple layout, featuring forward canards for steering and rear stabilizers that used unusual vortex generators in front of them for improved stabilization. A suitable transporter erector launcher, based on the already developed for the Tondar 69, allowed for inclined launch and precise trajectory alignment. The Fateh 110 was intended to replace the Tondar 69 and could offer several key benefits over its predecessor. These benefits included the flexibility of a solid propellant missile, such as quick launch capability, no need for pre-fueling of toxic propellant, and prolonged on-alert status. Although combustion instabilities in solid fuel propellant missiles caused vibrations which the guidance system had to manage, the faster acceleration and quicker burnout reduced the active guided period. This would reduce gyroscope drift and improving accuracy. But the main setback was the problem of thrust termination to put the missile into the necessary precise velocity window to hit its intended target on an unguided ballistic trajectory. The Fade 110A version entered production in 2002 with a circular error probable CEP, of 600 to 700 meters. This large CEP was primarily due to the guidance system being active only during the boost phase and the absence of a thrust termination system resulting in residual thrust and velocity uncertainties that caused inaccuracies greater than those of the Tondar 69 liquid propellant missile. The initial Fade 110A batches had a range of 200 kilometers and carried a warhead weighing approximately 450 kilograms. Despite its limitations, the Fate 110A's performance was still effective for military purposes, particularly when targeting larger objects and concentrations of equipment. It is believed that the Fate 110A was exported to Syria as the M600 Tishreen with a licensed production line in 2006. An improved variant, the Fate 110B, was unveiled in 2006 and put into production as replacement product. The Fateh 110B variant extended the range to 250 km using an improved steel alloy for the motor casing. This version is believed to have incorporated an enhanced guidance system adding a wind correction feature upon atmospheric re-entry, improving the CEP to an estimated 150 to 250 meters. Once again, four years later, the Fateh 110C variant was introduced and put into production. The range was again improved, this time to 300 km achieving parity with the export variant of the Iskander ballistic missile that had been denied to Iran. This enhancement was again most likely primarily driven by the use of a further improved steel alloy for the motor casing, and it is believed that the guidance system was also made lighter. The accuracy is thought to have been improved in this version as well. One way how better accuracy might have been achieved is by addressing the main source of inaccuracy, the velocity error caused by the lack of a thrust termination system. 
By remaining inside the atmosphere for a longer period during the boost phase, the unwanted thrust from residual propellant burn could be managed by dynamically modifying the trajectory and altering the missile's course via aerodynamic steering. The CEP of the Fateh 110C is unknown, but may have improved to below 100 meters. Shortly after the introduction of the C variant, the Fateh 110D was unveiled in 2012. This variant did not improve in terms of range, but it did enhance operational conditions and most importantly accuracy. The preparation time for launch was shortened and the missile's lifespan was extended. The main difference in the D variant was that it was the first member of the Fateh 110 family to achieve true precision strike capability, meaning its accuracy combined with the warhead's destructive power ensured the destruction of the target. It is estimated that the D variant had a CEP of around 30 meters. The specific changes that allowed this level of precision remain unknown, but it is believed that the mastering of fiber optical gyroscopes was the key enabler. An inertial measurement unit using such gyroscopes could sense the velocity error caused by the lack of thrust termination and trim it via trajectory changes when re-entering. Whether other advanced features of the Russian Iskander were matched by the time of the D version entered production is unlikely. Features such as depressed trajectory flight, manipulated re-entry angles for a steep dive maneuver, and pseudo-random terminal evasive maneuvering are believed to have been incorporated to some extent into the never officially unveiled E variant of the Fate 110. The E variant is believed to have entered production around the mid-2010s and to be the last variant of the basic 200 to 300 km range FAD 110 excluding more advanced variants that will be the topic of another video. The FATE-110 is a lifetime-limited weapon that requires its propellant to be replaced after 10 to 15 years, a process that involves significant effort. It is believed that the initial FATE-110 variants, the A and B variants, and likely the C2, have had their guidance systems retrofitted with a satellite navigation mid-course update feature to enable point-strike accuracy. As these variants have become less critical in the ever-improving arsenal, the risk of adversary interference with the externally received signal may be considered acceptably low. Since the last position update is received in space at high altitude, far from the target region, the feasibility of sufficiently intense jamming and spoofing of the signal might be deemed low risk for theater ballistic missile operations. The footage from the strike against Kurdish separatist groups in Iraq, using the Fateh 110B variant, could indicate a higher accuracy than the original B version likely had. The Fate 110 is still believed to be in production after more than 20 years, with improved variants that lower production costs and enhance reliability, such as replacing the pneumatic actuator system with an electromechanical one. Fate 110 variants have been seen in service with Yemen's Ansarullah and are confirmed to be present in the arsenal of Lebanon's Hezbollah. The production volume and the available arsenal of the Fate 110 are likely among the largest of Iranian ballistic missiles, and the later precision strike versions are highly cost-effective weapons that can be used to threaten adversaries' logistics in the rear. A key difference between the Fate 110 and other similar ballistic missiles, such as the DF-11 or Iskander, is the simplicity and producibility of the design, which is geared towards low-cost features. This approach has proven its worth over the years. In an ironic turn, Russia, the producer of the Iskander ballistic missile which was denied to Iran in the late 90s, has reportedly reached out to Iran for the delivery of Fateh-related missiles in its conflict with Ukraine. While the Iskander always had a secondary role as a tactical nuclear weapon delivery platform, the Fateh 110 was geared towards quantity and low-cost, standoff, precision strike capability. The many more advanced variations of the Fateh 110 are the topics of future videos. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.